Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation, where today we're talking about excelling in the grace of giving. We're going to be taking a look at this passage of scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, where the Apostle Paul tells the people, just as you excel in everything else, I want you to excel in this grace of giving. So we're going to be taking communion over this today. Just asking God for help to help us to excel in this grace of giving. But why are we taking communion every day? About 10 years ago, I had pretty much no spiritual life whatsoever. I was just doing life on my own without God. But life wasn't going the way I wanted it to go. I was stressed out all the time. had the weight and pressure of life just sitting on me all the time. At the time, I was running my personal training business. And my business started out really great. But got into some tough times with staff turnover, and I got some months where I'm losing thousands of dollars in a month. And I remember getting to the place, just going for a walk with my wife around the neighborhood and telling her over and over, there's got to be a better way to live. There's got to be more to life than this. And it wasn't for a lack of seeking, because I've been traveling all over the country, studying with the best health and fitness experts, studying health and fitness. And I was reading books, taking courses, going to seminars, mentorships. Not just fitness, but other areas like finance and leadership and business and relationships. But I wasn't finding what I was looking for. And then one day I came across this challenge to start reading one chapter from the book of Proverbs every day. Proverbs has 31 chapters. So on day one of the month, you read Proverbs chapter one. Day two of the month, you read Proverbs chapter two. And you just keep going like that until the end of the month. And then you start back over again. So I've been reading these Proverbs for a little while. And then one day, Proverbs 13, 22, just seemed to jump off the page at me. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse got me thinking, what's the most valuable thing that we could pass on to future generations? After some time of thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that the most valuable thing we could pass on would be wisdom or teaching or training. So I made a commitment that day. I'm going to create manuals, lessons, or systems for all the different areas of life. Areas like purpose and health and family, finance, and all the areas of life. But really, when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek God, began to press into him. And from that moment on, my relationship with him just began to grow exponentially. He began to teach me, began to train me, began to teach me this different way to live. We make him the source of everything. We make him the center. It wasn't always easy all the time, though. I had to unlearn some of my old ways. I had to break free of some old patterns. Got put in some impossible looking situations at times. Only to see God just continue to show up over and over and over again. And as I was going through this process, just began to simply document what he was taking me through. Just follow his leading. Just document what he's taking me through. And over the course of about 10 years now, it's turned into this whole program we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint with books and courses and partners. But out of everything we do in the Abundant Life Blueprint, I believe the most important thing is daily communion. Daily communion is what I call the number one table turner for all of life. It has the ability to just turn things around, to change the trajectory of our lives going forward. Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. It's just this opportunity to remember his sacrifice and all that it means for us. Helps us to abide in him so that our lives produce much fruit. The Apostle Paul says every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. Which in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation of all these benefits that are found in the new covenant. But it's also important we take it the right way. Every time we take communion, we take it with the fear of the Lord. With deep awe and reverence for the sacrifice of Jesus. And I think it's important we remember both sides of the cross. On one side, we remember all that he went through, all that he suffered for us. But on the other side, we remember what his sacrifice did for us, that he connects us back to God. We can have this covenant relationship with God. And to remember both sides of that, I think is very important. So the process we typically use, we start with about a two minute long prayer that's mostly scripture. Coming from Ephesians chapter 1 and the prayer of Jabez found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And then we take a few minutes to examine ourselves. Because the Apostle Paul says some people are weak and sick and they die early because they don't examine or judge themselves before taking communion. And if communion has the power to, the, to do that in the negative, 
I believe it has the power to do the opposite of that in the positive, if we'll take it the right way, to make us healthy and strong and give us long life. And then after our time of communion, we've been talking about some practical, physical workout tips and advice. Because I truly believe physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. So let's get started with our prayer. And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening, their families, all those connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear Son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us, to make your face shine upon us and let us find grace and favor in your eyes, to expand our borders and our territory, to expand our capacity to receive your purpose and grace, your love and your goodness, and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. I ask you to send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today and help us be sensitive to those opportunities, to keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and to do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders, and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus, amen. All right, we're going to go through the other half of prayer. This is our time to examine ourselves. Are we making today a masterpiece? How are we going to do that? We're going to get connected with God. We're going to walk out this day together with him. And masters of anything are simply masters of the fundamentals. So we talk about executing these four fundamentals and bringing some presence and some energy into them today. But before we get into the fundamentals, let's do a quick reminder. God's got a process. When God took the people from Egypt to the promised land, there was a process he took them through. And to make it very simple, it's just believing God's got something better for our life. He's got something better for our life believing and trusting in that, that he can take us there. And then it's simply learning how to put off our old ways of self-effort and striving after things, learning to rest and to trust in him and to, to allow him to navigate us through this path. As he moves us in, he brings these promises to pass in our life. Just resting and trusting in him. So our first fundamental, let's get positioned in the light today. This is the on-off switch. Either we're in the light or we're in the darkness. There's no in-between. How are we going to do it? We're going to start with humility. Jesus says, you want to become great in the kingdom of heaven? you got to humble yourself like this little child. Just take in our position in humility today. Uh, humbling ourselves in relationship to God. Humbling ourselves in relationship to other people. Because it's the humble who are given grace. And we're going to receive this forgiveness from God. We're going to forgive ourselves in the middle. We're going to walk in grace and forgiveness with other people. We're going to take our position in love today. To walk in the light is to walk in love, kind and patient and gentle, always assuming the best, keeping no record of wrong, delighting in the truth, always hoping, always trusting, always persevering, because love never fails. And we're going to take our position in gratitude and praise today, one of the greatest expressions of faith. And gratitude and praise is one of the easiest ways to maintain our positioning all day long. And being in position is a big deal because it puts us in position to be able to receive all that God has for us. In Christ, God has taken everything that he has and he gave it all to Jesus. And we get this amazing opportunity that we get to be in him today. So this day today, we have access to his spirit and power and presence, his love and peace and joy. 
his mind and wisdom, health and energies available for today. He's got time and finances, purpose and grace. It's all in there, available to be received. We said yesterday, the power is available. It's always available. We have to learn how to be able to receive this, and we got to learn how to get it flowing through us in our life, out into the world where we see the fruit or the result of it. So our first step is to get in position. Our second step is to magnify the light. We're going to turn up the brightness. It's going to magnify this light, make it bigger or greater. And it's going to expand the capacity where God can flow more of all these good things through us. It's also going to get this new covenant rooted and established in our hearts. We'll become more fixed and immovable and consistent in it. And to magnify the light, it's all about what we're focused on throughout the day. What are we thinking about? What are we talking about all throughout the day? I think of it as meditation. And so how are we going to magnify the light? You can pick one of these things on this list. You can pick more than one on this list. You can pick a scripture and just keep rolling that scripture over and over in your mind, thinking about it, talking about it. We can magnify God's unfailing love or his faithfulness, his mighty works, our righteousness in Christ. We've got peace with God. We can magnify every good thing that he put within us. Stay focused on all the things that are going well. You can look back at all that God has already done in our life. Because what he started, he's going to finish. And just stay focused on these things throughout the day. Now, it's not denying that there's issues or problems. In this world, we're going to have trouble. We're going to have issues and problems. But it's choosing to cast those cares over onto God. And we're going to magnify him as bigger than those issues and problems. Because we trust that he can solve them a whole lot better than we can. Now. He does give us a choice. We could choose not to do any of this. We could stay stuck in pride and rebellion, bitterness, unforgiveness, venting, complaining, pouting, and just toiling away trying to figure out the answers to all those problems, meditating on all the ways people have wronged us. And that's where we've got to learn to recognize those symptoms. Because wherever we're positioned, whatever we're magnifying is going to produce some symptoms in our life. And to make it very simple, I want to kind of narrow this down today. One of the biggest things you're going to notice, well, anytime we're behaving, you just don't feel right. You're behaving in a way that you don't like, or you just feel this pressure, this heaviness and weight and pressure is one of the biggest symptoms that you're going to feel. Emotionally, there'll be the fear and stress and worry. We're dreading things in the future. But the big thing I want you to notice is you're going to feel that heaviness and weight and pressure in your spirit. On the other side, when we're positioned in light, you'll feel this lightness in your spirit. You're going to feel this rest in your soul. And when we rest, God goes to work. And now everything is free and easy and effortless because his peace and joy and love and mind and wisdom, his health and energy, it all just begins to flow. And now all of a sudden we've got hope in any and every situation because we've got God with us. And it's learning to get skilled at recognizing these symptoms. Where's my positioning? What am I magnifying right now? And then making quick adjustments. Because everyday life's throwing stuff at us to try to knock us off track. It's learning to recognize those symptoms. And if we ever get off track, to turn it back around quickly. And the good news is it just, get, just takes a moment to get right back into the light again. How do we do it? We recognize those symptoms. And then we humble ourselves. We repent. We turn. Father, forgive me. I've missed it right now. We receive that forgiveness from him. We forgive ourselves. If we need to say we're sorry to somebody else or reconcile with somebody else, we take those steps. Then we start praising and thanking him for his grace and his goodness. And I like to pray this very simple prayer. Father, thank you that what you put within me is more than enough to handle whatever's coming my way today in a beautiful, graceful way. Helping to tap into it and see it flowing in my life at a greater level today. You go through that simple process, the weight just lifts off you. You feel the peace and the joy and the love just wash over you on the inside again. And then our third fundamental, we're going to stay tuned in today. Every day God's trying to teach us and train us and navigate us. But we've got to stay tuned in to him. My favorite way to do this is with a journal before bed. And lately we've talked about installing what we call some filters at the top of our journal. These are just short phrases, maybe a statement, maybe one word that we keep rewriting at the top of our journal every night before bed, just as a way to reinforce God's ways of doing things, his standards in our life. It might look something like this. God is working continually for my good, 
and I'm going to do continually good for others. You just keep rewriting that. It helps to navigate you throughout the day when you're tempted to stress or worry or snap at people or retaliate at people because they wronged you in some way. God is working continually for my good. And I'm going to do continually good for others. And I like to start my journal with gratitude and praise to get in position. And then to magnify. Well, went well today. What are all the ways God was showing up today? Because the more we look for them, the more of them we're going to see. And I like to ask this question. God, what were you trying to show me today? And just get still and listen, reflect back over the day. Whatever comes into my mind, just begin to write those things down. And then we're going to stay tuned in throughout the day because he's trying to navigate us throughout the day. If you ever feel like you're losing that connection with him, just take one to two minutes. Just slow down, take a couple deep breaths, get aware of his presence with you. Think of it like plugging in a phone. You're going to get powered up or charged up in him again. And then our fourth fundamental, doing what we know to do today. We've got to walk in the light that we have. The final thing I like to do in my journal every night before bed is to plan out the upcoming day with God. And I've learned to stick with, what do I know to do today? Because sometimes I learned I was getting ahead of him. I was toiling away in my mind, trying to figure things out, trying to force things to happen ahead of schedule. On the other side, sometimes I was procrastinating on things that I knew to do. What do you know to do today? That becomes the plan for the day. And then we wake up like a kid on Christmas morning, excited for the day. And we remember this very important principle. That the first thing out of our mouth every morning sets the tone for the whole day. As I began to learn this, I began to seek God. What's the best thing for us to say? I felt like he was taking me back to Genesis chapter 1. The very first words we see God speak in the Bible. Let there be light. So I've begun to start my days this way. Very first thing in the morning, the first words out of my mouth. Let there be light. And it's amazing how just such a simple little thing just brings a different energy into the day. Then we're going to get connected with God. We're going to start walking out that plan today. Full confidence that he's right there with us every step of the way. And when we get to that place of confident faith, his grace just begins to surge through us. He begins to go to work. He begins to beautify our lives. He's the source of beauty and beauty is attractive and magnetic and just begins to pull more and more of everything God has for us into our lives. So let's take a look at the scripture today. Excelling in the grace of giving. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 9. The Apostle Paul says, But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness. We talked about earnestness the other day. We talked about earnest deposits. Earnest is a measure of sincerity. And in the love we have kindled in you. See that you also excel in this grace of giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity. Some versions say earnestness of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. If you have the time today, I'd recommend just go back in and read this whole chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, just for a little more context. But we're going to take communion over this. Heavenly Father, number one, we're just so thankful that you help us to excel in everything. We thank you that even though Jesus was rich, he had it all in heaven. For our sakes, he became poor so that through his poverty, we might become rich. And we're asking for your help today to help us to excel in this grace of giving. It's a grace which means we need your help. We're asking for your help to excel in this grace of giving from this point on in our life. And we thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Just take a moment to remember. God didn't have to send Jesus. He could have left us on our own, just separated from him, walking in darkness forever. But he chose the way of love. He chose to send his one and only son. Jesus is willing to come. He's willing to become poor. He was rich in heaven. He's willing to humble himself even unto death on a cross. 
to be rejected and betrayed, spit on, hit, mocked, ridiculed, whipped, nailed to a cross. Worst of all, I believe he's separated from God. It pleased God to crush him. The cup of God's wrath was poured onto his body. He became sin for us. His body was destroyed. But then he was raised back to life. And that same victorious power now lives on the inside of us. He connects us back to God, makes us right and holy and perfect in his sight. All through his one sacrifice. So, Father, we thank you for this bread. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. So after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. It's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness. He transfers us into the light. We can have this covenant relationship with God. This blood sworn oath. That he's with us. He's for us. He's going to do continually good for us. We've got God on our side. So Father, I just thank you for this cup. Just this opportunity to have this new covenant with you. Just to know you. We ask you to bless this cup in Jesus' name. If you have a juice, you can take your juice. <clears throat> All right, workout stuff. So yesterday I was doing my daily communion workout. If you don't have the workouts, you can go to our website, theabundantlifetrainingcenter.com. When you get on our email list, you'll get access to the workouts there. But doing the workout. Normally I've been doing the workout on my own most days. And I've gotten to the point where it's just part, it's just a habit, it's part of my day. I don't have a problem executing the workout as far as the accountability of showing up, some people need that accountability. That's helpful. I was at a place I didn't really need that. But I had a workout partner. I had a friend who joined me for the workout. And it was a great blessing. I'll tell you what, there's just a, a lift, a boost that you get when you have a good workout partner. Iron sharpens iron. One man sharpens another. There's a boost that you get in the actual workout itself. Now, a workout partner can help with accountability can help you show up to be able to do the workout consistently. It can help with that. But it can also help to take that workout and elevate it up to a new level where you sharpen one another. So if you're in the, in the, in the uh, process of working out regularly, something I would recommend, find a good workout partner. It'll be a tremendous blessing for you. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to, par if you'd like to learn more about partnering with us in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.